Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Mehdi Bouzid. For those who don't know me, I work with the electronics manufacturing test team here at Keysight Technologies, covering the Southern European countries and I'm based out of our Paris office. Today's webinar is a continuation of the webinar that we did last March entitled Accelerate Higher Throughput in a Smaller Footprint. If you haven't got the chance to view it yet, please do connect with us and we'll be more than happy to share the recording link with you. In today's session, we will focus more on the software and tools for the Keysight i7090. Later in this session, I'll be joined by my colleague and Keysight Business Development Manager for the InCircuit Test product line, June Balang, who is located um, out of our Center of, of Expertise office in Singapore. Without further ado, let's look at the agenda for this webinar. First, I'll start by doing a refresh on what we've seen in the first webinar and go through the i7090 product overview. I will then hand over to June, who will focus um, on the software overview, development, debug, test fixtures, tools, and lastly, production runtime software. Before we close, I'll give a brief summary before getting to the Q&A session, where we'll be happy to answer any question you may have. Please note that, we, that as we go through the material, you can still post your questions using the chat button. We will have also a couple of, couple of poll questions without forgetting the feedback form. We look really forward to your feedback. Just a reminder, this session has been triggered by the feedback you gave us during the first session. In today's world, electronics is everywhere. Connected products are now an integral part of our lives and will continue to evolve as more devices enter in the world of connected ecosystem. The following segments are example of devices that we are seeing becoming a part of our life, if not a necessity. In the IoT segment, we have devices like smart home, entertainment, security, surveillance, wearable appliance, and many more. In the consumer electronics products, we have home appliance, lighting solution, personal care, game. In the consumer medical devices, we have hearing aids, blood pressure, glucose meters, thermometers, handheld, ultrasound, sleep monitoring, are increasing, especially with the current pandemic situation. And lastly, in the automotive segment, we see electronics growing in the form of remote keyless, seat control, parking system, infotainment, dash cam, night vision lighting control, etc. So what is so special about these products? The common traits of these products are inside these devices. These are the small size PCBAs, as small as 25 square millimeters in size and are manufactured in a very high volume. Some of these PCBAs, while might consider low in cost, still they are considered critical part of the finished product, such as part of the car, medical devices, and for everyday use in our daily routine. Honestly, I would be very worried if my Alexa device won't switch the light on when instructed to do so using the 20 euro smart switch I bought from Amazon. The current most effective in circuit test solutions used by most manufacturers have not been able to address the testing needs of these products. This is because the PCBA itself could not pay for the test using the traditional in circuit test system. While the low cost board Test favor, favored by many manufacturing as the manufacturers such as MDAs are inadequate to cover the test and throughput requirements, making it more expensive to be used in high volume test manufacturing. The PCBA manufacturing needs an effective solution to test these small sized PCBAs to maximize throughput and able to match the current bit rate of the production SMT line. The newly introduced i7090 is a product that can tackle the challenges yourself and others may face while looking for a cost-effective solution to test the products we've just mentioned. Why? Because it has 20 parallel cores versus the existing quad-core systems, allowing to test a panel of 20 DUTs fully in parallel and ensuring a fast throughput. The solution is also too capable 
uh, capable, it's also capable to program up to more than 20 microcontrollers in parallel. And we all know that these devices usually have a low density of components, like two to three microcontrollers on a board. The 1790 allows to program up to 160 channels. As we've, you, as we've seen during the first webinar, the hardware architecture of the i1790 is flexible and scalable as it's built on an 18 slot PXI chassis. I won't spend all the time talking about the hardware architecture and will rather keep going. I'm using here the slide presented by Mr. Vincent Herriot during the first webinar. I see Vincent is within the participants, so I want to thank him for allowing us to use these slides. As you can see, and as an early adopter, Lacroix was able to reduce the footprint, increase throughput, and replace four machines, two in circuit testers and two flash programmers by a single i1790. Vincent has mentioned during his presentation finding the, user uh, the human machine interface quite friendly and intuitive, experienced a quick setup and easy to use debugging. Well, we will explore more these items during today's session. As a final reminder from the last session, the i1790 has been designed having the below challenges in mind, having a product that is too small physically and or in terms of density for a circuit test, willingness to increase throughput at minimum cost and coupling a circuit test with flashing for a high runner. The first massively parallel test system, the Keysight i1790, is a solution these challenges to these challenges with its 20 cores Capable of parallel flash programming up to 160 channels, it has a small footprint and is Industry 4.0 ready. As an early adopter, Lacroix achieved higher throughput in a smaller footprint by using a single machine for parallel ICT and onboard programming. Now, we will get deep in the software with my colleague June Belang. June, the mic is yours. Thanks, Mary. So let me, let's move on to Keysight i1790 software overview. And of course, good morning to everyone. A traditional manufacturing defect analyzers or NDA, analog cost spot test systems are traditionally built with a focus on hardware that enable printed circuit board assembly to be tested in manufacturing floor. Anything beyond manufacturing lies on the shoulder of the test development engineer to ensure that the test program will be able to run with the highest throughput, yield, and test coverage. Keysight i1790 massively parallel board test system is designed with two most important parts. Best in class hardware that are a combination of Keysight 30 years history in, in circuit test system. Keysight i1790 software interface is designed with a .NET standard on Windows 10 64 bits OS. And the Keysight i1790 software provides low code, no code environment, open tab for test program development to bring up the test program faster especially for high volume manufacturing products. The Keysight i1790 software is designed to meet the needs of the production, as well as the people that are involved in the manufacturing floor, which includes the production test engineer and production test operators. On top of the needs for manufacturing operation, the Keysight i1790 software also caters for the design engineer NPI engineer, test development engineer, and fixture vendors. It's basically a software that caters for everyone. Industry 4.0 and Smart Factory. Digital transformation in manufacturing is driving Industry 4.0, and big data analytics is the key to technology driver. Large amount of test data from machine and system are captured and analyze to generate actionable insights, driving the benefits of Industry 4.0 adoption. 
Pathway Manufacturing Analytics. It's an industry 4.0 ready electronics manufacturing data analytics platform that performs real time advanced analytics using information extracted from big data, such as manufacturing process, tests, and equipment data agnostically. Keysight I-1790 also support both the IPC CFX and IPC Hermes 9852. IPC CFX is an industry developed open international standard forming the foundation and backbone of factory of the future application. IPC Hermes is a protocol to advance industry 4.0 in electronics manufacturing. The Hermes standard provides the state of the art for board flow management along with mixed vendor lines in a manufacturing line. Let's go to software development and debug. The Keysight i7090 software development and debug interface caters to the following. Design engineers, both digital and analog, who would like to know the PCBA design for tests they are working on and what are the components coverage even at the early part of the de design stage. This will help them to design the board that will be able to meet the highest test coverage and ultimately the yield and throughput of the product. NPI test engineers, test development engineers, and test picture engineers will have the visibility of the PCBA test coverage that will run in the production and be able to work together with the design engineer as well as the test development engineers and test fixture. By sharing the common test report and verify the test coverage using the Keysight i1790 development software to improve the testability of the PCBA. Production test engineers will be able to support the manufacturing run and use the tools and features on Keysight i1790 enabled to meet the production target as well as the yield. Let's move on to the user types of Keysight i1790. Let's start with the type of user that allowed to log into the Keysight 7090 software application. There are three user login types for Keysight i7090 software. The admin mode authorized creating additional user account and set the privilege as engineer and operator as desired for administrative purposes. The engineer mode enabled the user to develop and debug test program. This also allows them to generate test coverage reports plan for the test strategy, and be able to collaborate with different engineers to ensure success of the PCBA in the manufacturing. The operator mode enables the user for production mode only, wherein user has access only to launch and run the test program. With the Keysight i3070 software development interface, which are accessible to user who has the permission as development only. And this is the engineer, which able to develop and debug the test program. The other user with the permission as development will, without the permission as development, will not be able to access the development interface and also protect the test program for the project to be modified by an authorized user who has no permission to access the development interface. The Project Explorer allows the development user to be able to define the test strategy, make changes to the device and parameters if needed. Expand libraries can import and edit part and programming libraries, expand board explorers, you can edit device and nodes, such as change device type, and also set the vectorless test nano VTAP as well as clumping diode, and also be able to set the power on the PIX nodes. He also allowed Expand Assignment Explorer can set the VTAP MOX card for GPU relay, power supply, test core, programming devices, and other custom wiring. Expand Test Color Explorer can also do the debug on each de devices. As you can see, the development software interface is designed to guide the development engineer and be able to develop the test program in the fastest way possible. Once all the devices are defined and board information included in this um, interface, you will then be able to generate tests in a single click. User will be able to clear button to clear previously generated tests, then 
regenerate again or mark the devices in a permanent that you don't want to overwrite so that when regenerating the test, the mark permanent device will not be overwritten. This is a useful uh, for test program when it's already been debugged, but there are changes to some of the components. Instead of restarting from the beginning, it allows to quickly update the test program with a few clicks. And this final layout window, the first is the user should define the layout dimension, set the X icon ordinates according to the actual panel layout. The panel height with rotation information are come from the, the file that the, you basically input to the system. The auto assign has two direction, horizontally as well as vertically. User can select one to auto assign board number. If any issue, user can also use clear button to clear previously assigned. User also can click the panel layout area to manually assign the board number. Another important part is be able to visualize the uh, hardware of the system. User will be able to auto assign the cards or manually assign the cards on the system to the test program you are developing. If all boards are assigned to a call, tests will execute sequentially. But in enable to um, get hold of the parallelism of the system itself, the board has to be assigned individually for each card. The call is to use the second channel of the BAM card with a slot four to six pin cards. Thus, these two boards use two calls. The test will be executed in parallel. In this window, the user or the engineer itself will be able to assign the power supply. All board CUT power supply will be defined in the power supply page. The power node list comes from fixed nodes list. So if you want to set the DUT power supply node, you must set it into the fixed node list. The i7090 totally supports four sets of N Keysight's N6700 power supply. The power supply and the module can be selected in the drop-down list by the user itself. The voltage and the current limit must be input in manually. And after the setup in the summary window, we'll show each power supply module setting details. Another important part and features of Keysight I-7090 is the programming. In this window, the development engineer will be able to assign the target device on the CVCVA for programming. The assignment can be done on each individual PCVA in the panel, allowing faster programming setup and generation. And another important interface on the test system is, of course, the debugging interface for the engineers. Let's use a resistor test to introduce some debugging steps. The i7090 uses some of the test algorithms and option with the famous Keysight i3070 in-circuit test system. The debug method is also the same as 3070, such as swapping the SNI bus, add guarding nodes, add sense A or B, or change all the options, or modifying some of the options, as well as adding the delay. The debug, debug interface is similar to all analog devices, and it also includes function to do a mass edit change device type among the few that help the test engineer to be able to debug the test in the shortest time possible. And in this window interface, the user will be able to visualize the system power supply and verify the communication of the actual power supply and system connection. This is very useful when debugging the fixture as well as the test program. And this will help basically the test engineer fixture vendor during the debugging of the test program and fixture. Let's pass to Mehdi. Mehdi, please okay. help to go through the poll. Yeah, we have a poll question for you. So uh, two questions for this one. First one, do you have a new high volume, highly panelized PCBA that are currently at design stage? Uh, you, you can answer by yes or no. <laughs> OK, 
okay, I see answers coming. Pretty much of yes. Okay, let's move to the second question, please. Do you need a new board test system that will be able to meet your throughput requirements? Ten more seconds, and we close the poll. Back to you, June. Thank you, Mary. So let's move on to the test fixtures and tools. And I'm sure this is one of the important part of a bot test system. One of the important part of the bot test ecosystem is our fixture partners. On Keysight I-1790, they are once again part of our effort to introduce Keysight I-1790 into the world. In America, we have conducted fixture training to more than 15 fixture partners. We have partners that are providing fixture kit and also partners that are currently starting to build a fixture for I-1790. And also in Europe, we have conducted fixture training to more than 10 fixture partners. We also have a partners that are currently now uh, working in providing fixture kit. And also fixture partners that are now working to get them ready for the fixture build for a customer project in Europe. Of course, in Asia Pacific, as well as in China, we also have fixture partners that basically we work together, um, training them and making them ensure that they are ready to support I-1790. So if you have a project that are moving towards any other part of the world, we have already fixture partners to support that. This is the actual fixture of the Keysight I-1790 Massively Parallel Board Test System. The fixture will be placed inside the I-1790 to enable testing of the final PCBA. The top fixture will normally include the fixture electronics such as Nano VTAP, signal conditioning card, LED test cards. The top fixture also played, will also include the test probes to target test points that are located on the top surface of the PCBA. The bottom, the bottom fixture will consist of the interface pins that connect to the system cards. The bottom fixture will also consist of the wiring from the bottom test point to the interface pins, as well as the bottom pro plate will include test probes to target the bottom test points of the PCBA. Again, we are supporting all this with our software. And one of the important features for the picture generation is to generate the fixture. The pull down menu under the Project Explorer generate fixture will generate the fixture file needed. And this fixture file will be able to send to your fixture vendor to start the fixture fabrication. Of course, we also have a software that allows you to define custom wiring assignment. In this page, user can set, set, set up special wiring, switch probe, and top probe. In a special wiring, User can define coax cable or twisted wire for any node and can define the wire gauge. In switch probe, user can define the device present test by switch probe and selecting the target device in the drop down list. So just to make note, the top and the bottom side must define correctly. And in the top probe, user can define the top probe for header connector. Select the target connectors first and then select which pin you want to place the top probe. The top and bottom side also must define correctly. User just assign one board, then click the button to duplicate the other boards. This feature will be available on all custom wire settings. 
Another tool for development or fixture vendor is to be able to visualize the hardware configuration of the system. The color code cards represent different types of card present on the target system, where the fixture will be built and debugged. The menu in the button will help the engineer to easily find the function that he needed instead of trying to remember the commands. This gives the advantage for the engineers to quickly learn the software application. On this window, the panel's PCB a layout interface window. The user will be able to define the layout dimension as well as setting all the coordinates for the actual panel. The auto assign has two directions, horizontal and vertically, and user can select or auto assign the board number. And this is important information for the fixture vendor also. Other tools that are important is the system diagnostic. In here, the user will be able to manipulate what needs to be tested during your system diagnostic, just to ensure that your system is in the tip top shape before you begin your debugging. Another information, important um, tools is basically the auto adjust. In the auto adjust window, again, the user will be able to identify what are the parameter tests needed enable to have the successful auto adjust. Let's move on to software production runtime. And once again, let's have a poll. Thank you, June. So this poll question is my prefer preferred one. I wish I could have answered with you. So the question is, how are you likely to attend the trade shows coming up end of the year. For example, we're hearing echoes that Protoconica will be still held. Um, option number one, yes, I cannot wait to be back in trade shows. Option number two, yes, I expect situation to improve and safe to attend. Option number three, no, I prefer virtual experience that it is safer. And option number four, no, COVID-19 has made me realize virtual interaction is similar. Okay, I, I love the question, the, the answers I'm getting, so. <laughs> okay, let's give it uh, some more time, uh, five more seconds. Okay, let's close the poll and move on. All right, I hope to see you in um, November. Let's move on to software production runtime. Once again, this is an important part of the bot test system. The Keysight i7090 massively parallel bot test system production software interface is designed to operate in high volume manufacturing, maximizing the parallel capability of the system to achieve high throughput for a highly penalized bot. After login by the operator, the, the operator will be able to load the project's file manually using the pull-down menu from the interface or use the auto-load project to automatically load the projects itself. The Connect Hardware button will enable the test program um, production software in interface in the test fixture to connect the system and start testing immediately. The i7090 allows user to switch between engineer and operator by setting the user as engineer and operator. First, login as admin in user management window. User can set up each user's names group. If user is set to both engineer and operator group when logging in as engineer, you can able to switch operator and engineer. You do not need to repeat login and keying this password again. Otherwise, each switch operator and engineer need to re-log in again and input the password. Once you enable the user with both engineer and operator permission, you can switch engineer and operator mode by this drop-down list. Administrator can mandate or disable operator login password. 
I'll pass the next topic to Mehdi. Thank you, June. I think we have also a poll question um, before we summarize. Okay, here's the question. Do you see functional test integration to board test system important? Yes or no? I see more yeses are coming than the no. We give it 10 more seconds and we go to the question number two. Okay, question number two. What will be your preferred board test system for high volume panelized PCBA? Low cost test offline system or the Keysight I1790 massively parallel board test system? Five more seconds. Okay, let's close the poll and move forward. So let me summarize what June have, um, have presented to us so far. Um, I believe um, now, June, you can have a very well-deserved glass of water while I summarize uh, what you've said to, uh, to the audience before we move on to the Q&A session. Well, we've seen that the I-1790 software allow a dynamic system configuration thanks to the software interface that allows system configuration. It features a rich user experience thanks to the app suite. And as it is based on the OpenTab sequencer, so moving forward, you can also add your own uh, libraries to use with the I-1790 and your own, um, I will say, third-party software. It offer advanced debug capabilities with an easy to use debug interface and the set of tools made available for an easy debugging. And as stated by the early adopter, the graphical user interface is quite intuitive and offer a clear development flow. Now let's move to the Q&A. As um, as a very surprise to this session, so for the first five participants to ask questions, you will be entitled for a trial of the Keysight I-7090 test development application software, including 90 days free license. Still, if you want 3070, we will do it for you. So sorry for that uh, small mistake uh, on the slide. Um, okay, June, I think you you can open your cam as well as we as we take on the. Um, the, the questions. So for the audience, you can have two options. Either uh, you uh, you type in your questions to the uh, to the chat, or if you want, you can also raise your hand and ask your question live by, uh, and we will uh, unmute you definitely. Okay. Um. Michaela, can you please unmute uh, Bernard? Bernard, I think you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. Yes, Bernard, okay. you can speak. Yes. Mehdi? <laughs> yes. Hello. <laughs> hello, Mehdi, and hello, June. Thank you for this presentation. Um, I have two first questions, and I've, I think I will have later, but for the moment, the main, f the first one will be, what will be the interface between CAD data and the uh, system? 
Is it something included or do you have to use something others like uh, Aster tools and things like this? Um, and so, um, me? yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. So, or, or you answer the first question or I ask my two questions and you will uh, answer later as you, as you know, as you want. Yeah, I think we, we let's do the first question so that okay. um, clear. So the question, if I repeat, is that is there a um, a, a CAD um, software that are um, um, together with seventeen ninety? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, on on this first phase, um, we we doesn't have a CAD translator. Um, we we all believe with with our um, uh, experience with the uh, 3070 that most of our um, fixture vendors as well as our customers already have the means to uh, uh, convert uh, their own CAD data. Um, but then again, we we are also looking into what are the common CAD data uh, that the customers are using and see whether we can also integrate that in the future um, uh, release of the software. So currently we don't have, um, but that doesn't stop us. I think uh, we have um, all the means to be able to convert your CAD data into the file that is needed by 1790. Okay, right. Uh, the second one question is, uh, what will be important I think is how you will manage the programmer um, used it means um, for many many micro 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 and so on uh, we need a customized solution for programming because we have uh, common buses like can or bkgd or things like this but someone we have a specific things from nxp and things like this micro and how it will be managed it means our uh, it will be uh, developed by Keysight or you will have partners to do this and so on. All right, good questions. Um, uh, currently, we actually have um, partners uh, with um, the, the programming and um, it's, um, it's part of the 1790 uh, integration. We are using um, uh, SMH right now. Uh, of course, it's, it's not exclusive. I mean, um, in the future, uh, we hope that there'll be more uh, vendors that will come out uh, to, um, to be able to integrate on 1790. But um, currently we do have SMH and the way uh, it was managed is that you will have, uh, once you integrate or you buy your our, um, system together with the SMH, uh, you'll be able to, um, work with us or directly with SNH um, in terms of um, library programming or any part of library that you need, you want to develop. Of course, there's a fee, uh, fee on, on those uh, development, but those uh, already have existing library, you will be able to um, get it and download. Okay, right. For and the I moment, think you mentioned, sorry. Yeah, you mentioned about the can, Lin. Um, yes. Is, it, is that part of the question? Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, I think over the uh, last three months that we've been working with customers, um, can and Lin has, has been um, uh, one of the uh, 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 target devices uh, requests from customers. And mm -hmm. um, we, we are really looking at it right now and uh, uh, we have worked with R&D uh, to um, include the Canon Lean into the next uh, releases, uh, which is uh, um, targeted uh, most likely by uh, FY22. And just an explanation, uh, FY22 is, um, is starting October, uh, November, I will say, um, yeah. 21. It's a so it's a, it's a key side term. Uh, so uh, starting November 21, we aim for the release. Thank you so much, Bernard, for your questions. Uh, if okay. you have any other question, please let us know. Um, David, I think you can unmute yourself as well and, and go live for the question. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and yes. clear. 
Okay, that's great. So Bernard has already raised one of my concerns about the programming. Uh, the second question I have is um, one of the main concerns in our plant when it comes to the large panels of small boards is manual handling by an operator. Are there any ways for automated input and output envisioned? Cool. Um, uh, yeah, as, as you can see, the, uh, the, the, the system that we have are, are, is basically in an inline system. So um, the question is is whether we are uh, um, we we are also um, uh, including a feeder to to the system. Is that the uh, the current yes, question? Yes, more or less. If it was yeah. supposed to be used as an offline solution, not totally in line. Agree. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think he said uh, we we do have quite a number of uh, inline system, and uh, most of the customers that we work with uh, has their own prepared um, uh, feeder or or board handler itself. Um, but of course, we we are um, uh, we we should be able to recommend um, to uh, to our customers um, if they don't have any prepared. Um, Feeder uh, on that. Um, I'm not sure whether Maddie, you you have any suggestion on that, but currently we don't have. Yeah, we we, we don't have a preferred, I will say, supplier for it fit in, fit out. But if necessary, we can connect you with the, with some partners we have worked with uh, that can design for you a fit in, fit out. And um, you can either have two options: um, either to place the 7090 in line with the SMT. Or for your specific question, I think you, you were aiming more of an island testing. And then in this case, you have uh, you will need to install a fit in, fit out to um, to take the boards in and out from the handler. And that is definitely possible as um, as we're respecting the inline standard. So we are at SMEMA, if I'm if I'm not mistaking um a standard so you can you can definitely find uh find these if you don't know any we can connect you with some partners we work with that are specialized in the handling um fit in fit out solutions okay thank you thank you okay we'll still have three licenses to give yeah Okay, Bernard has a second question. I think you can directly unmute yourself, Bernard. If we have already unmuted you, you can uh, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, just for information, maybe if you give a license for 3070, I think you will have no more question. Maybe it will be better to if to 7090. No, it is 7090. It is a typo. It is 7090. It is a typo. But when I read the typo, I said, okay, let's do it both. So we give a preference to the, to, to the people. It was just too precise because maybe <laughs> some people may can have a doubt. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's definitely. all. <laughs> definitely, it's 7090. Definitely, it's 7090. Okay. I, I see, David, you're still raising your hand. Do you still have another question you want to ask live? Or oh, should we sorry. move? Okay. For, okay. To, so I think down. we can move to the questions we have on the. But yeah, Bernard, go ahead. Last, uh, last one, maybe. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No yeah, uh, you ask a question to the poll to, uh, uh, if uh, we will be interested to have functional uh, tests on this kind of system. Yes. Um, it uh, just from my point, okay, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little precision. It's not really functional tests. I think it's not maybe with loads, uh, many complicated uh, instruments and things like this. It's just maybe simply to check what is done after programming. For example, uh, testing some signals, some voltages, and uh, things like this. It's not, I think, for my case, not very complicated mm -hmm. test. Matt, it's something called functional tests. It was just okay. too precise. Good, yeah. We'll, we'll take note of that. And I think um, uh, we, we definitely currently on the works right now uh, to be able to measure 
uh, voltages on on the uh, board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, uh, the future enhancement will come. Um, if you if you allow me, June, also to tackle this question Go with, ahead. Uh, yes. with Bernard. So uh, Bernard, that question was more to to get the feedback from from the participants on uh, what what kind of next features they want to see in this type of systems. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have already some some side discussion with uh, with with some of your team members um, that mentioned uh, the possibility of putting a small viper with it. Um, so. <laughs> We're not there yet. It's still, uh, I will say, uh, pending discussions and confirmations. What is what is interesting to know is that in the handler itself of the 7090, we have a, we have some space available uh, from 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 behind, and that space can definitely accommodate a small system like Mercury or Viper. But we're still evaluating uh, all 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 the needs, the facts, the security issues, the uh, the the, uh, the values for current, for loads, for voltages, and um, also if it's um, if it has a business sense for users like you or not. So uh, that's um, that's the reason behind that question to gather some some feedback and inputs from uh, from potential users. Okay. Okay, June, I see a couple of questions coming also through the chat. So let me read out the question loud for you and uh, you may uh, you may answer to that one. So for for HV functional test, high voltage functional test, do Keysight have a solution for combine a test, which means start by ICT and then go for uh, for functional tests, uh, but assuming this is a high voltage? Sure. Um... Thanks, Mohammed. And um, yeah, I, I think you you hit one of the uh, area where um, um, we are working on um, on this. And of course, um, if, if you allow, um, we would like to maybe um, contact you more on this uh, because currently we we are basically um, defining the requirements for this. Uh, Kind of test. So um, yeah, right now we don't have it, but um, it's it's part of the plan that we have for the phase two, and um, we we are we are open to um, our customers to work with us on the needs uh, because we want to make sure that uh, this feature is not only you know uh, defined by us, but as well as from the customers like you who really need this type of. Uh, features. All right. So if you are okay, um, Mohammed, we 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 can work on you on this uh, offline. Sure, definitely we can we can do so. And uh, as a reminder, I think we've sound, we've said it in the. Um, in the previous um, webinar, if by any chance you have a board, you're not sure if 7090 is a good fit for it, we will definitely um, uh, be more than happy to make the evaluation with you and uh, look at the board design, look at the um, the capabilities, the testability, and uh, provide you with, a, I will say, your coverage and estimated test time if we can able to, uh, if we are able to make it with the 7090. Yeah. And um, also for the information of everyone, um, for those uh, who would like to uh, see the uh, actual system, we actually have a demo in Europe right now. Uh, we do have one in Germany um, that that are currently installed. So those who are in Germany was, uh, who want to see the actual system, um, you are more than willing to um, schedule with us, uh, talk to Medi, and um, and not only that, we have another two system that also in Europe, um, although it's currently uh, with customers. And I think uh, if you have a, uh, a project or um, a board that you want to also evaluate using our I-1790, we are more than willing to schedule that with you. Okay, I see 
I see no hands are raised. So June, if you if you have any questions coming through the chat you want to address. Sure, yeah. Um, okay. I think some of the questions that, that uh, we see is that um, they have a new uh, uh, project, uh, which is a small board, highly penalized. And the question is, is there any special DFT needed uh, for it to be able to test on 7090? So um, I guess that's, that's uh, really a good question. And, um, um, uh, 7090, like any other um, um, test system, um, the requirement is almost the same. Um, the DFT definitely is, of course, lies into the test points of the board. Um, but then uh, some special features that we have on 7090 uh, is the parallel test. Uh, we can test up to 20 boards. So depending on your throughput, um, requirements, if you really need a uh, high volume, uh, what we suggest is to design the boards um, in panel. Um, maybe in a panel of 20, if you really want a high volume uh, type of uh, output, or if you also need uh, some type of programming. So it's, uh, it's basically, um, be able to mix and match all the features and requirements that you need to be able to maximize the coverage as well as the throughput of your project. So my suggestion is to, uh, again, talk to Maddie or send us an email. Uh, if you are requested, no string attached. Uh, if you need a, uh, a quick um, evaluation or a quick overview of your board, on how it will fit into our 1790. Thank you, June. Uh, so we have also another question from Mohammed, Mohammed Ali. Uh, regarding the software, do uh, do we have an auto debug function that help programmer to be, to debug fast the test programmer? Yeah, sure, Mohammed. Uh, I think those are, are really the features that we uh, are integrating into the 1790. Um, yes, we do have on some of the tests uh, that that um, uh, we generate on the 1790. Um, the um, auto debug is is some of the features that, that we uh, integrated on the software itself, as well as on the analog side. Basically, our um, test generation is is the same as what we have on the 3070. So the um, as long as you uh, you put in the right um, um, uh, algorithm or, or the, the the CAD file, uh, as well as the connection of those components, the, um, the the fix the test generation will be able to generate a test uh, with uh, minimum debug needed. So that's the beauty of um, uh, having the 30 years experience on in circuit tests. So we'll be we'll be happy to maybe do a demo of you. I think um, um, our AEs in um, in in Europe are are well uh, trained uh, on on the 1790, and if you want to have a, uh, a one-on-one. Um, uh, presentation and even a remote debug um, sessions uh, will be more than willing, happy to um, schedule that with you. I think June also that if um, if Protronica is confirmed. Um, oh yeah. And according to the answer I've seen in the poll, so more than 60% of the people are, are expecting to, 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 to travel again and to, to participate again in, in trade shows. And uh, if if it's on and and if it's safe, definitely, I think we will have also the uh, seventy ninety show uh, shown there. Yeah. Great. Okay, I see no more questions arriving. We're uh, five minutes. Uh, before before the hour and the planned time for the end of this webinar. So uh, like, like, let's do like auctions. Any additional question is coming? 
if not, uh, then we thank you for uh, for spending your time with us. We thank you for the questions. Um, and please, when you exit the webinar, uh, spend a few minutes to respond to the survey. Um, I have no need to remember uh, to, to remind a couple of uh, attendees that this webinar was triggered by the first webinar. So um, we hear your feedback and we execute on it. So please um, answer to the um, to the survey, share your feedback with us, let us serve you better uh, for the next time. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. Thank you for your time. Thank you, June, for staying awake. Uh, I know it's a little bit uh, late in the afternoon now in Singapore. Thank you so much and uh, everyone have a good day. Have a nice weekend coming ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.